All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all for joining. So today we're going to talk through uh, a bit of a, a preview um, or really jump into our advocacy program for 2023. Um, a lot of it is the same for those of you that have been around for uh, a while. It, it'll be familiar, but refreshed um, with uh, you know some refresh pieces that will make a little bit more sense for um, the way that we are doing virtual advocacy and all of that these past couple of years. Um, so first off, you'll see that you will still be able to expect our Advocacy in Action uh, newsletter the first Wednesday of each month. Um, you'll still be able to access, of course, our uh, beloved Action Center on the website, and it'll be your go-to place for both federal and state action alerts. Uh, excuse me, some noise in the background. Um, and our AF Advocacy Twitter that we launched, uh, I can't believe was two years ago now at this point, um, is the best place to get uh, immediate updates from us on all things advocacy, policy, news, health policy, Valentine's will be coming up in the next handful of weeks. And I'm sure Anna's excited about that. Um, so all in all, you'll hear from us uh, in a lot of the same ways, in all of the same ways. Uh, in fact, at the same frequency, you'll have those monthly advocacy and action newsletters. You'll see action alerts on a, uh, from us on those urgent uh, priorities on the state and federal level. Um, and it'll still include all of those great action opportunities, learning opportunities, and other ways to engage with the Arthritis Foundation broadly. So that's what looks the same. Uh, more of the point of this webinar is to talk about what's a little bit different. So we'll dive into that. And again, feel free to use the Q&A feature to submit any questions or comments that you have, and we'll be sure to monitor, monitor them as we go along. So the biggest thing, the most obvious thing that is going to be different and look different uh, this year and in the, the years to come is that we, um, instead of resetting our priorities, our activities, and our overall program every single year, um, we are going to focus on a two-year cycle to keep our momentum up for the entirety of a congressional calendar. So um, as you might know, uh, the 118th Congress that is right now, they're on two-year cycles. And so every two years, they sort of reset. We need to reintroduce the bills that we were working on last year um, and kind of not restart the priorities, but refresh them and get them, uh, get new legislators acquainted with them at that time. So we are pivoting to have all of our work kind of uh, structured up against that calendar, just to have, uh, like I said, the biggest uh, momentum and kind of impact throughout those two years. So what comes along with that is that we will have uh, more educational opportunities focused around advocacy uh, featured on our website. There we go. Are you all hearing me okay? I saw an error message. Okay, sorry about that. Um, like I was saying, we'll have more educational opportunities uh, that will be available on our website year round or two year round, uh, really all the time, easy access so that you can learn and research topics as we go throughout the year. And we'll dive into what some of those uh, initiatives and topics are that come up on a recurring basis, um, just so that we can walk through that a little bit more. Um, we will, of course, still be sending out uh, those recommendations and kind of reminders of where we are within the advocacy roadmap that we'll dive into in just a little bit here. Um, so we'll give you some updates on that as we go. And the biggest thing that I, I see many of you might be very interested in as Platinum Ambassadors, past and current Platinum Ambassadors, is what exactly happens to the Platinum Ambassador Program. Of course, that's continuing on and we are shifting it to follow this two-year cycle uh, and be more reflective of our work in that way. So we hope that this will allow ambassadors to uh, have more time to complete ambassador activities over the course of those two years and more people can uh, get involved over that period of time. So it, the goal is that a bad year or a few months if you have something come up over the course of this two-year cycle doesn't have to mean that you're totally counted out and can't catch back up for the Platinum Ambassador Program. Uh, of course, that means our Platinum Ambassador requirements will reflect this new timeline uh, and those exclusive plat Platinum Ambassador opportunities uh, will be available throughout uh, those full 
two years. So um, for those of you that are involved in that program or are working towards that program, you'll see more of that coming out in the next couple of weeks as we begin to uh, work on Advocacy Summit and, and everything coming up this year. So that I think is the uh, biggest topic to work through there. But the gist of it is we're going to have the uh, advocacy roadmap that we'll show you uh, a few pictures of in just a, a few minutes up on our website available that you'll be able to navigate through um, and view all of the different opportunities available over the course of a year, research the topics that you're most interested in, uh, and then be ready to go when those topics do come up. And so just to put this into perspective, I think we need to go over a little bit of the landscape for the next uh, year or two. Um, and I'd like to pass it to Anna to go over some of that, just to get that sort of 10,000 foot view or something like that to, to see where we are and where all of this is situated within that. So to you for now. Sure. Hi, everybody. Glad to be here with you all this evening. I just wanted to sort of put a fine point on why a two-year cycle I think is going to be really beneficial to our program. Um, so we'll talk about what kind of two-year roadmap might look like, and then Stephanie will jump back in and show you the actual roadmap. So we are at the beginning of a new Congress. There's a reason why we started this new two-year cycle this year, because we want it to align with the congressional cycle. And so what you'll see in year one of that cycle is a lot of groundwork laying, and this is happening in Congress as well. So Committees haven't been completely set yet. Um, Elisa and I are, are watching uh, feverishly every single day, every single minute to see when the major committees that we care about are going to be fully set so that we can start our advocacy and really make sure that you all have what you need in order to um, advocate for yourselves. So that's what's happening right now. We are rebuilding a little bit about the Arthritis Caucus. Every single two years, everything resets. So as we're thinking about this advocate program being kind of a reset, uh, it's a reset in Congress as well. That means all of our priorities have to be reintroduced. Things that didn't get done in the last Congress, for example, Step Therapy, the Safe Step Act is a great example of that, where we have to go back with, to our champions and have them reintroduce that legislation. It'll have a different bill number and everything. Most of the time, every once in a while, you can get the same bill number, but that's rare. Um, appropriations is something that we have to do every single year. So that's something that you'll see the same year to year. The uh, I mentioned the Arthritis Caucus a minute ago. We are right now looking to do a lot of rebuilding because we lost a number of our caucus members either to retirement or election losses. And so it's a good opportunity to reset your own relationships. Either it's a member of Congress that's returning and you wanna talk about what the reset looks like for this particular term, uh, or oftentimes they have new health staff. Those of you who have done this a long time know that that is a common theme on the Hill but you also may have a new member of Congress. And so it's a good time to begin that relationship building. So the welcome to Congress packet and using that as a tool to introduce yourself and the Arthritis Foundation's priorities to your member of Congress, both new and returning, will be a big focus of quarter one. In addition to appropriations, of course, because appropriation season is really in the spring. So every year that will be the same. The welcome to Congress packet will be coming out next month. Actually, that's next week uh, now. But so February will be a big time where we are really encouraging you all to spend time introducing yourself to members of Congress, but we as staff are doing the same thing. We're reaching out to committee staff and really setting what our brand for this Congress is. And we can talk a little bit more about that in a, in a little bit. You all know from the last Congress, it was really all about pocketbook issues and out of pocket. So we can talk a little bit more about what the priorities are for this Congress uh, after you see the roadmap itself. So that's really the beginning of the advocate cycle is gonna be all of that groundwork. And then we start to move into slowly but surely building back up our support, co-sponsors for the bills that we care about and things like that. This will be the first time in AF history, I believe, that we have our summit in the fall instead of the spring. And I think what's good about that is it gives us a lot of time to get our priorities reintroduced, or introduced for the first time as the case may be, to start to build some good groundwork there. And so when, once we get to September, we'll really kind of know where the trouble spots are, where we need to be building more co-sponsors, um, perhaps what states we need to build more co-sponsors out of, all of those kind of things. It just gives us more time to work towards that. And then once we are done with Summit, we still have a lot of time to do the follow-up. Uh, and, you know, 
into the fall in, into the next year. So that's all of year one. Year two is all about assessing where we are, how far have we come with building support for our priorities, and where do we need to go in order to be successful? We have one year left in this term, and we need to kind of figure out what needs to happen. And it may be really more targeted grassroots. We really need more Republicans on this bill or Democrats on that bill, or we really need a committee hearing. And so we really need to spend time with uh, those committee members pushing for a hearing. So it gets a lot more focused. Uh, so that will be year two. That's federal. Stateside, you know, states are a completely different animal. And the, I think, benefit of thinking about states in a two-year cycle is that some states are biennial, meaning they're only in session every other year. So in a two-year advocate cycle, you are guaranteed to have an active legislative season in your state, no matter what state you live in. So that's kind of the cool thing about it. Everything does change year to year, for sure. And our big state season is now. Um, and so that first part of the year will always be really heavy uh, state side. Uh, so things will change month to month and year to year. Some sessions are very short, some are longer, some are year round, not many, but, but a handful. Uh, so that will be different. Um, but like I said, that kind of two year roadmap allows us to make sure that we have an opportunity for everybody, no matter where you are, to engage with an active state legislature. So um, I'll just quickly to address the question that was in the chat and then Stephanie, I'll turn it back over to you to go through the roadmap itself, even though I know I, I te teased a little bit of it already. Uh, there was a question about Oregon and uh, copay accumulator legislation that will continue to be a major priority of ours, both federal and state. We co-lead the coalition, uh, the state subgroup of that coalition uh, that that is really focused on getting that copay accumulator legislation passed in different states. And there are some states that we're going to lead in on that issue. And then there are some states that other patient groups are going to lead in, but will support. So anytime there is a state capital day um, and that Oregon one, we would certainly want to send out information, activate as many folks as we can to join in. And we will be supportive as well. It may not necessarily be in person from a staff level, um, although Melissa is going to try to travel as much as she can to some of the states we're going to be really active in. But we'll want to work really closely with the state committees. Uh, the advocacy committees, the chairs, and others to make sure that we can have a presence in those states that we're not necessarily the lead on. And there will be more to share there as well. Um, if you're not already a state chair or connected to a state advocacy committee, but you're interested in getting involved in state issues, I definitely encourage you to reach out to Stephanie or Melissa um, to find out more about what the opportunities are in your state. Because um, even if we're only gonna be highly active in a select number of states, there, I would say the vast majority of states, there's something um, that a partner organization of ours is working on that we're also supportive of, and there's always an opportunity to engage. So more to come on that certainly later, um, but if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out and, and let us know. Um, Stephanie, back over to you. Thank you, Anna, that was really helpful. So now we're gonna dive in and talk through the roadmap just a little bit more. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop a link in the chat feature for you all to go and take a look at the roadmap. I'm going to show a picture of it in just a minute, um, but just to talk through the basics of what this thing is, build up the suspense a little bit, and then we'll take a look at it. Um, I am proud of the graphics of it, so we'll we'll take a look at it in just a second. Um, so those of you that have been advocating with us for a while or are familiar with the policy world in general, uh, know that there are certain topics and initiatives that come, come up around the same time every single year. We're always preparing for August recess, for appropriations season, um, for our Arthritis Awareness Month, Pain Awareness Month, and things like that. And so the goal of the roadmap is really to map all of those things throughout the year um, we know that we are introducing our legislators to priorities at the beginning uh, of each Congress and of each year, really, it's in some cases, um, just to make sure that they are onboarded, um, just like we all are, to the issues. So we're outlining all of those things that are recurring and that we know are going to come up over the course of the year. The details of it might be different every single year. We might be asking for a different level of funding for the CDC arthritis program. 
or we might have a different specific uh, ask that we're talking about for August recess. But we know that those kind of staple items are with us every single year around the same time. Uh, so just being able to map those so that you all as advocates can see them ahead of time um, and kind of look ahead, plan your year out, if you will, do some research on different topics and things like that, like I've said a couple of times, um, so that you can be ready to move when things are moving because the advocacy and policy world tends to move very, very quickly. So this is just having a map, having our, our GPS open for <laughs> our trip around uh, Congress and around state legislatures can be helpful and that's the goal with this. Um, so essentially it's a calendar, uh, a visual calendar that fits the natural flow of our advocacy work. Uh, and with it, uh, like I said, you can read ahead essentially and dive into the topics that you have a particular interest in. Interest in. Um, if you are a parent of a child with juvenile arthritis, you might be most interested in what is happening in the summer around Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month. And you can uh, learn all about uh, how juvenile arthritis uh, affects our community and dive into the asks that are uh, related to that, like pediatric subspecialty, loan repayment program, and workforce issues in that way. So the point is, is that the items reflected on the roadmap are pieces that will come up every single year without fail. They'll look different every year, but the general concept of them will remain the same. Um, or we always know that we're going to be uh, increasing funding, increasing awareness, and continuing to educate our legislators and our communities on all of these different topics. Um, so we plan to continue emailing you um, about urgent action items. You'll still, you know, when a new bill is introduced or is moving forward uh, federally or on the state side, uh, you will be hearing from us still uh, to get that immediate action through. Um, and we'll, of course, be prompting you with all of these activities as they come up. Um, but we're just hoping to give you all a chance uh, to dive into our website a little bit more and take a look at all of these things. So without further ado, here is our roadmap and we're gonna zoom in in just a second. Um, we have our little advocacy Jeep here that is uh, navigating us through the sometimes rough terrain of federal and state advocacy work. Um, and so in each advocacy in action newsletter, that email that comes out the first Wednesday of each month, will give you an update of just about where we are in the roadmap. So you can think ahead to what's coming next um, and kind of plan accordingly, know what to expect and all of that. This document uh, it is a, a full document. If you're able to access the link that I put in the chat, uh, will be available on our website. And in the future, you'll be able to click around physically on these bubbles within the PDF. Um, to access, it'll send you to resources on our website that pertain to each item that we're talking about. So uh, Anna mentioned the Welcome to Congress packet that we'll uh, chat about a little bit more in a few moments. Uh, so if you click on this top, jumping into the legislative session bubble, it'll send you to uh, our action center that will encourage you to send the Welcome to Congress packet to your legislators, which will introduce them to arthritis priorities. Um, if you view the full roadmap on your device now, you can take a look and see kind of when these different opportunities uh, and initiatives come up. Uh, it is not a fine detail type map, but a suggestion, recommendations of what comes up throughout the year. Um, and you'll see that we have time slots built in where uh, we will work with you all to check in on our progress. We tend to do mid-year uh, advocacy reviews, year in review uh, webinars and things like that. We just had one in December uh, just to kind of benchmark our progress, see where we are, and then talk about what the road looks like ahead. Kind of sort through. I'll just jump in and, and kind of pick up where, where I left off in, in my piece a few minutes ago around the Welcome to Congress packet, which will come your way next week. And it really sets the brand. And what's really exciting about this year um, both the launch of this new two-year advocate cycle, but also it's the launch of our ideal model of care program, which a lot of you already are aware of, but it's a program we spent the last probably year and a half, two years uh, laying the groundwork for doing a lot of patient um, data collection. Some of you may have participated in those surveys or focus groups, and we've done expert interviews, 
we are putting all of that work together into a plan of action. The idea being that we want to help every person impacted with arthritis achieve their ideal model of care. And so we have identified through your uh, stories and data and focus grouping and other things, uh, what some of the core challenges right now, uh, and it spans what you all told us, everything from out-of-pocket costs to administrative barriers, prior authorization being chief among them, step therapy, uh, but then also care coordination and doctors being able to talk to each other and the ability to have electronic medical records exchanged across providers and things like that. Um, there were just a lot of sort of holistic, comprehensive um, kind of points that came up that we want to be responsive to. So we're formally launching Ideal Model of Care in terms of what those recommendations and solutions can look like and how uh, our advocates can kind of help us drive forward those solutions. And that's going to span our entire advocacy program. It's federal, it's state, it spans legislative altogether. Um, there will be a lot of direct uh, healthcare system advocacy that comes along with this. Uh, so it's really exciting. It's a very ambitious um, agenda, but we're, we're really excited to be able to formally launch it alongside this new advocate uh, two-year cycle. It's also, we're coming up, I think three about three months shy now of our 75th anniversary as an organization. So there's just a lot of interesting uh, sort of timeline points that we can use to really push the overarching kind of premise that arthritis needs to be looked at as a much more urgent public health priority. So you'll see that in the Welcome to Congress packet next week. There's a letter from Steve Taylor, our CEO, that kind of outlines that. Uh, and then our priorities that kind of fall underneath that. That uh, urgent public health priority piece is really key. That's where our appropriations work comes into play. So you'll see that. You'll see a lot of the same appropriations asks, but we're going to layer on more aggressively over time to really ensure that the funding, federal funding, matches the disease burden of arthritis, which it currently, I would suggest, is woefully inadequate. Um, and then on the on the more kind of legislative side, not just appropriations, but the kind of authorizing legislation, a lot of that administrative burden stuff that we've been talking about um, and your just ability to access the health coverage and the treatments you need when you need them, not to say that the out-of-pocket pieces aren't important, they will continue to be for sure, uh, but we really want to really make good progress on those kind of prior authorization issues, uh, onerous step therapy requirements, things like that that are just kind of chipping away at your ability to just stay adherent and maintain continuity of care. Continuity of care, that's a term that we use a lot. Um, it seems like this Congress that there's a window of opportunity. There's a lot of emphasis on that right now and how pharmacy benefit managers, you know, sort of play a role in oftentimes creating those barriers as uh, so there's a lot of advocacy there. And so we're going to be definitely taking advantage of that window of opportunity. So you'll see a lot of our asks for this Congress are related to that. So those are things that you'll see um, coming up. And then I'm going to turn it back over to Stephanie, see if your audio is working a little better, you can jump in on the uh, Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month section. Perfect. And hopefully this is working. I'm going to try to sit still. You're still robotic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry about that. Anna, I have some notes in the chat if you might be able to pitch in. Sorry about that, everyone. You got it. Um, yeah, so well, I'll just pick. I'll just keep going. I'll pick back up there. Uh, Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month will be another important checkpoint. Um, certainly, I think appropriation season, the the kind of the bridge between appropriation season and then our summer kind of real focus on Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month and whatnot is May Arthritis Awareness Month. Just kind of a sneak peek that we're going to have a lot of exciting stuff here. We're going to be doing a lot of hill activity alongside the American College of Rheumatology. We want to really showcase this, uh, just raise more visibility on this need for arthritis to be a more urgent public health priority. Uh, and then also really showcase the arthritis caucus. So building back up that membership in the caucus and that sort of thing will be really big. So there will be some things there. Certainly we'll be attaching a lot of our advocacy to that 75 year anniversary. Uh, and then we're also gonna be uh, hosting some other kind of formal ideal model of care launch activities as well. We're working towards having a landing page on our website for all things ideal model of care, where we can really put a lot of the materials that you will start to see in the spring. So that's May. And we get into the summer with Juvenile Race Awareness Month. 
there will be a lot there, of course, at JA Conference where we hope to see many of you. Um, and this is where we really focus on pediatric workforce issues, uh, which we, uh, you may not know this because it hasn't been super widely uh, advertised yet, but the pediatric loan subspecial, I can say this, Pediatric Subspecialty Loan Repayment Program, which we have been advocating for for many, many years and, and finally got funded for the first time last year. Well, the appropriations bill that was just passed into law in December, right before Christmas, included an additional increase in that funding, an additional um, $10 million uh, over where we were before. So $15 million in loan repayment for folks who go into pediatric subspecialty, which of course includes pediatric rheumatology. So really exciting, something that we want to continue to build on because the original authorization of that program was 50, five, zero uh, million. And we would love to someday get to that point of five, zero million and not just one, five uh, million. So, um, but really great progress so far, uh, which we've really done in large part with your help. Um, and so that'll be the summertime. August recess, of course, is a good time to kind of check in, especially on those pieces of legislation as they get introduced, like the Safe Step Act. Um, and then we will have our uh, mid-year check-in alongside as well in the summertime. That's a good time to really look at what's going on with both the states. Many of them will be wrapped up by then. So we can sort of see where we were successful, where we really need to regroup and think about being successful in the following session. Uh, and then also federally, do we have all of the legislation that we care about, all of our priorities? Have they been reintroduced? Do we have champions on the Hill for those things? Are the committees paying attention? What's going on there? Uh, it's a good opportunity to do a check-in with you all as well. Um, so that makes for a really busy summer. We can move on, I think, to the next slide. Um, and then, of course, you know about Summit being in September now. We will have more to come in the early spring around that, uh, including save the date and registration information and that sort of thing. Uh, and then through the rest of the year, of course, continues to be that reevaluation and preparing for state sessions to pick back up in the next year. So I might actually, um, if Melissa is available to come on, she might want to say a word or two about uh, state legislative sessions. Um, since I spent more of my time on federal, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to miss the state activity. Sure. So as Anna was noting before, it's a very busy year for state legislatures. Uh, all 50 states will be in session in 2023, and we have 45 of them already. And by April, uh, once we hit Louisiana is always the last in the mix to join us, uh, everybody will be active. Um, but it is also a big year for budgets in a lot of states, um, especially for those legislatures that only have, do it every other year. Um, but we have already seen a lot of pre-filed legislation. Um, I will say that a lot of states are still selecting committees and leadership um, and getting uh, those bills um, put into different committees. So as those are um, progressing in each state, we're working with Stephanie to activ activate the network here um, to make sure that you guys are tuned in for an opportunities to engage with your lawmakers, um, just like with Congress, we wanna welcome them uh, to the legislative session with information about arthritis, keep our, our messaging front and center, but also uh, for top priority issues like copay accumulators or step therapy or prior authorization. A lot of those bills are being filed or drafted right now. And uh, you know, I'm on a lot of coalition calls and I know there's already chat about Oregon. Um, so thank you for, for those of you that are, are still in the mix and, and watching out for activity in your state, um, definitely going to be coming to you for those opportunities. Certainly, I can't be everywhere in person, um, though I will try <laughs> to hit some of those states that are really moving major campaigns. Um, I know I've selected about 10 states where I really want to hyper-focus this year. Um, and then uh, we will be supporting other coalition partners' efforts. To mobilize. So, if there are, you know, lobby days that other uh, associations, other disease groups um, are leading, we'll definitely let you guys know of those opportunities. Uh, but we definitely want to make sure that our name is out there and the issues that we care about are front and center as we move throughout these state legislative sessions. So, um, really, you know, we're just getting started. There's a lot of work to be done, and uh, we're going to have a busy, I would say at least through June, um, you know, a lot of states are very busy uh, this first half of the year. So 
Um, look for information from us and just stay tuned. Follow the instructions on the screen. The roadmap has been a very great resource and something and the whole team has put together just to keep you guys apprised of opportunities. But you know, everything from talking to your lawmaker, making sure that they know that you're a resource um, in district to um, making sure that you're spreading the word and resources that we have um, to educate other folks that are living with arthritis. So we uh, are more or less at the end of the formal presentation. Want to definitely welcome your questions to think about anything that we may have missed or that you want further clarification on to type into the chat. In the meantime, I'll just make a couple of quick notes. Uh, one is that we know that some of you, we hope that you want to engage at both the federal and state level, but recognize that you may have a sweet spot in one or the other. So we talked about the welcome to Congress packet. Melissa is also working on a welcome to elected office packet that we've used in the past stateside. So we're updating all of the state fact sheets. So we'll be available uh, starting possibly next week or the week after. Um, and so you'll have a toolkit that you'll be able to use to introduce yourself to your state legislators as well. So more to come there for sure. Um, in the meantime, we always welcome you to send any questions our way. We'll be sending some of these things out sort of one action alert at a time, but you don't have to wait until those come out to ask questions, um, whatever it is, we're always here to, to help. Um, so that's one point I wanted to make. Um, and the Anna, other, go Anna ahead. Could chime in too. Um, I know Stephanie has put reminders out there, you know, stay on top of the emails. We also have an opportunity through text messaging. So make sure if you haven't already opted in that you're opting in for that. Um, certainly, everybody's got their phone handy. I know I've got one right next to me at all times, um, but we'd like to try and, and engage in that way to send a, a text message out whenever we do have an action alert. So um, sure. try to make it easier to take action when possible. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that for some of you who are new and we've thrown a lot of, a lot of words like accumulator adjustment programs and step therapy, which may be a little bit foreign uh, sounding, <clears throat> we are in the process right now of recording some kind of 101 policy videos just to kind of refresh what these issues are, the things that we're gonna be really focused on this two-year advocate cycle. And so those will be available very soon as well. And we'll be layering on as we get more engaged in other legislative efforts. So be on the lookout for those, but don't be intimidated by any policy issues that seem a little wonky um, right now because we're really trying to address that and make sure um, that you kind of know what these things are and that you're able to recognize what's happening in your own healthcare. So you can see, oh, is this something that my health plan is doing? And you can go in and, and see. So hopefully that will be helpful. Um, we're definitely also helping to kind of heat map who your legislators are. I'm just responding to one of the questions that was in the chat. Um, so if you do have a member of Congress federally who's in a key district or stateside who's in a key district, we'll be able to kind of match those things up as those committees get set, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, and maybe reaching out to you specifically to let you know, hey, you're a member of Congress or your state legislator is a member of this important committee. So it's extra important to really engage. They hold a higher position of power on this particular issue that we care about. So we're doing a lot more of that kind of really targeted heat mapping, um, which is really exciting. And also we're creating this, uh, what we're calling people resource chart. So in the states in particular that Melissa is going to be really active in, we want to really get a comprehensive view of you know, who our advocates are. So we know you all, of course, um, if you're a platinum ambassador, a state chair, uh, anything to that effect, we have you down. But we also wanna add in others. You may have a local leadership board member or chair that may not be pumped into advocacy, but may really respond well to an issue that we're working on. Or you're like, oh my gosh, Texas is gonna be one of our core states this year. Um, and, you know, there are some great folks in Texas that I know of who, may not be platinum ambassadors, but would really like them to get involved in advocacy. So we wanna make it a two-way street as we're building out our kind of infrastructure and where we can be really active in these states. Um, so you'll see more about that uh, as well as we start to reveal where we're gonna be really active in the states um, and that sort of thing over the coming weeks. So just wanted to put that out there uh, so that you can kind of help uh, let us know where we can be most uh, active and, and helpful. Yeah, I definitely want to personalize those districts, that district outreach on the state level as well. Um, you'll probably start to see it kind of more personalized action alert messaging from us too. Um, I, I, if we have an action alert asking people to, our lawmakers to vote on something, I want to recognize who our champions are. So if you live in a district where, you know, that's the sponsor, uh, you might see a little bit different wording than, you know, if you live in a district where your legislator might 
um, not be with us or have questions about it, um, we encourage you guys to personalize those action alerts too. Um, make sure you're putting your stories in. I saw Helen had put a comment out there um, on the chat too, you know, fresh story on a copay accumulator. I personally just experienced this too. <laughs> so I, I have experience firsthand. It's always good uh, to make your the issues that we're working on real by sharing your experiences. So you see something come through, Lawmakers get those kind of template emails a lot. You can personalize it with just even a sentence or two. That always is helpful. I just to close out, uh, unless there are other questions, of course, but I would be remiss if I didn't also promote our Pathways Conference, which is coming up in uh, March in San Francisco, March uh, 9th, 10th, and 11th. We are going to have some advocacy programming there. We are going to really promote this ideal model of care, sort of a build your own ideal model of care so we can help you sort of map on your own experiences uh, and then help you identify different solutions that we are sort of going to be advocating for. Um, and so you're basically going to be able to, to create your own personalized advocacy plan, which I think is really cool. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to scale that up over time. So um, we are happy to follow up perhaps with the recording um, for this email from this webinar, but also in the uh, advocacy in action next week, there will be more information about that as well. Uh, but it's really exciting. We're able to have kind of in-person meetings again, which is uh, really great. We always love to be able to spend time with folks in person. I know several people that are on this webinar right now are already registered, which is wonderful. Um, and you'll see myself and Elisa there running those sessions on ideal model of care, in addition to a lot of other sessions on science and patient engagement and JA, just really, there's something for everyone there. So um, definitely want to promote that. So Pathways in March, we have our Threatness Awareness Month and all the fun activities there in May. Uh, we'll have our, our big JA focus with conference and uh, August recess in the summertime, then summit in September. So it's a really jam-packed year. We're really excited about it. And I want to thank everybody for joining us this evening.